I don't know. I don't know. We don't have We can always, you know, say no, but they're going to do the work and they get it. And they ask us for reimbursement. We either do or we don't. So. Yeah. All right, so I've got 6 o'clock. So at 6 o'clock, I call this meeting in Saginaw City Council to order. Please rise for the pledges. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Thank you. Please be seated. Item number two is the invocation. And for that, we have our friend Rabbi Mordecai Griffin. Welcome. Thank you, sir. Good to be here. God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob, I pray your blessing upon the, tonight's meeting. Wisdom to the mayor and the city council, Hashem, that you should give everybody understanding to make right and righteous decisions, and fiscally responsible decisions, decisions that come from your throne, Adonai, that will bless this city and create an atmosphere of peace and prosperity. Let your blessing be upon the police of this city, upon the fire department of this city, upon all the officials and all the administrators, and all of the citizens, Adonai. Bless Saginaw and let it be a shining example of your grace and your mercy. And the merit of Messiah, shall we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Rabbi. All right, so item three is the, is the audience participation that's covered on the screen. If you do want to speak with any item, please uh, see the city secretary. Uh, you will notice that we all have uh, partitions between us, so we're trying to socially distance responsibly, uh, wearing masks uh, or having the partition. So we're doing our best. Uh, we deal, we're still in the middle of a pandemic, so uh, we are trying our best to, uh, to handle that as well. So with that said, moving forward. Consent agenda. Action A is action regarding minutes of June 2nd. B is action regarding funding of signage and associated activities with the Saginaw Switchyard. C is action regarding authorization of individual project order with Kimley Horn. D is action regarding building improvement grant with DBE Realty Investments. E is action regarding resolution 2020 15, designating an officer or employee responsible for complying with section 2604 of the Texas Tax Code. F is action regarding disposal of city surplus items and agreeing with Tommy Lutz auctioneers for auction of city surplus items. I have a request to pull item D. So I want to entertain a motion on A, B, C, E, and F. Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve the consent agenda items A, B, C, E, and F as submitted. I'll second. Charles, second. All those in favor, raise your right hand. All those opposed, there is none. Let the record reflect we have a quorum. Uh, Ms. Big Horse is out this evening. So item D. Mr. Farr? I'll be abstaining from this item. All right, thank you. Uh, otherwise, are there any questions on item D? I have a question. Sure. Um, when we did the big grant, weren't, we, weren't they supposed to get approved before they did it, or can they go ahead and do the work and then ask for the money? <laughs> yeah, so the, the grant works on a reimbursement basis. Uh, <laughs> They don't request reimbursement until, but grant approval or not wouldn't slow them up. So you you all probably noticed the structure's been demolished. So, yeah. uh, which was our preference given the state of the, you know, had it not gone this route, it probably would have been posted as an unsafe structure, and we wanted to. Uh, I just thought that we, we were supposed to approve it before the, we gave them the grant. That's what I'm asking. Well, the the financial part of the grant is not won't happen pending your approval, but you know, we can't or don't control when the work happens. Okay. Any other questions for item D? If not, I'll entertain a motion for item D. Mayor, I make a motion that we approve um, action regarding the building improvement Grant agreement with DBE Realty Investments. Okay. Do I have a second? Charles, second. All those in favor, raise your right hand. All those opposed? All those abstaining? All right. Thank you. Motion passed. Thank you. Moving forward. Item number, well, let me get back to my agenda. Item number 
five is update on retail, retail recruitment efforts. For that, Aaron Farmer. Mayor, I'm going to ask if we can um, postpone that. He hasn't arrived yet. He's traveling from Austin area. and We can get back. Is he going to attend the meeting? He'll be here at some He's point. He's supposed to be here at some Yeah. We, okay. We thought he was going to be here already. He just hadn't made it yet. We will catch him when he, when he joins us. Thanks. That's fine. Moving forward, item number six. So at uh, 605, we're in a public hearing. Consideration action regarding a recommendation from the PNZ Commission for approval of a change in zoning classification and amending comprehensive land use plan with relation to 76.6 acres land of the J. Walker survey. For that, Director of Public Works, Rick Trice. Thank you, Mayor Council. Um, you'll recall that uh, at your May 19th meeting, you had considered this item after some discussion, took action, reconsidered, and then tabled the item for future date. So tonight, I guess, is that future date. We have a representative from the developer, uh, Dorothy Parks, who has some information she'd like to share with you and answer any questions she might have. Okay. Please. Good evening. My name is, deliver this, of course, uh, Dorothy Parks. This will be very quick. I have a very quick presentation for you. All right, here we go. Uh, so the site itself is 76 acres. Um, we are looking to do a, uh, next slide please. Do I have a clicker and I'm just missing it? No, okay. Okay, sorry. So this is the existing zoning, which is multifamily and community commercial already. Uh, next slide please. This is the proposed zoning, so we're looking to Keep the commercial uh, community commercial, but include uh, multifamily too. Uh, next slide. This is our proposed site plan that shows the retail. Uh, we're breaking it up into uh, four different zones, and this is truly will be a mixed use type project. Uh, the mixed use development, which will blend several of the different uses, residential and commercial, together. The goal of the mixed use development is to physically and functionally integrate uh, the uses by providing uh, pedestrian access and connections to all of the different uses within the, the development, as well as synergy between home and play. Uh, so the different blocks are um, some light industrial in that block A area. Block B, we're looking at doing some cottage homes, and those cottage homes will have some amenities, such as a community pool and a community area. Um, and then the block C uh, will be the multifamily, uh, which is a, will be about a three-story multifamily. That, too, will have amenities, balconies, uh, in-unit, uh, washer, dryers, open space, a clubhouse, things like that. And then block D would be the retail and community commercial, which will have service providers such as dry cleaners and... Um, nail salons, but it'll also have restaurants, both sit down and quick serve. Uh, can I get the next slide? Get the next slide. <laughs> uh, so this is an example of some of the multifamily that we have uh, built in the past. Um, again, we strive ourselves on having some of the top of the line granite countertops, um, along with the amenities that are expected of, of a top of the line uh, multifamily. And last slide, please. Oh, one more. That's also a multifamily that we've had. Um, you can keep going. Sorry. <laughs> and then one more. Last one. And that's the cottage homes. So those are generally one-story or two-story units um, that are usually have a little bit of a uh, yard area so that you can you know, let your dog out. They've got a small little yard attached to it. And then they, that, too, will also have a community area and a pool. And then um, overall, when, by developing this all together, we'll make sure that the sidewalks are all integrated with each other so that you can wake up and go walk to breakfast and get your coffee and things like that and then uh, you know, drop off, um, take Fido for a walk if you need to. So at this point, we are asking for straight zoning, and we are not requesting any variances. Um, and so that's it. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Do you have any questions? Mary. 
Can you give us an idea of what type of businesses would be in the light industrial? Sure. At the- well, yes and no. Right now, what we're looking at uh, for that is either some sort of storage unit, or we also have been talking to some medical offices. Um, so that'd be like a dentist office. Not you know, we're not looking at an ambulatory center or anything like that. So medical offices. Okay. I got one. Okay. Uh, Sorry, this is the. Crazy. MF1 mm-hmm. area, uh, you're talking regular apartments, you know, at market rate apartments. Correct. Okay. So there is then the possibility of juveniles, juveniles in those apartments. Is that right? Um, I mean, so I mean, we, kids. We, we can't, families will live there. Yeah, we can't rent right. to. Yeah, families, yeah. Yeah, yes. I mean, you're talking about it's, it's not kids. It's not age-restricted. Yeah. Correct. What have you got for them to do in that area? Uh, well, we'll have a pool area, and then we'll also have a clubhouse and an open space. Okay. See, I, I, I don't know if I didn't hear that the first time around or if you didn't say. don't really matter now, but <laughs> if you don't have something for them to do, they're going to go look for something to do. I have a 10 and a 12 year old, don't I know that? Yeah. So. <laughs> I don't know how many times I go up and down McElroy by Miraprosa, mm-hmm. and those people are out walking, looking for exercise. What is there for them to do in the MF2 side of this? If you're going to have sidewalks around it where they can at least walk the sidewalks and... Correct. So the idea is that the sidewalks in the cottage area will integrate into the sidewalks with the multifamily and will also integrate. So we'll have pedestrian access throughout the entire property, and it'll also be ADA. So if you're in a wheelchair, you can also get around um, from one area to the other area. Did I misunderstand your question? Well, there's a gentleman that out of Mariposa. I see him going up and down micro on that sidewalk in a wheelchair. You know, but he's out in the community. He's getting out and getting some his form of exercise. Sure. It's just it was comical when you said wheelchair, but uh, oh. <laughs> anyway, that's all I had. I just thank you, Charles. Other questions? All of these are at market, right? Yes. Just a, couple, just a couple of things. Okay. Uh, can, Gabe, can you refresh my memory on what the densities are between MF1 and MF2? Yeah, so the difference between the two, one is uh, 18 units an acre, the other is 24. So uh, going forward, we've asked applicants, and I'll accept uh, blame, but, you know, when we have a map like that, paint by number and letters, that doesn't mean anything. So MF2, if you can think it in your mind, Mariposa, a pretty standard three-story um, apartment complex by the time you have parking and that sort of thing. Uh, also at Mariposa, the cottage uh, quadplex, the single story, mm-hmm. that would be pretty similar to MF1, what they're proposing. Um, also draw your attention if you go back to the um, concept plan where there's the different lots. So you'll, you'll kind of see um, the... Thoroughfare plan calls for a future extension of Western Center, which would kind of create a mm, triangular-ish type piece there. Um, Provident has identified that as being kind of a restaurant, retail type hub. Mm -hmm. The goal with mixed-use development is to have it connected with several different uses, to have it walkable. Uh, The way they make those retail, and um, Aaron just came in, we may put him on the spot here pretty quick, but the the way... uh, make these developments work is by having uh, enough people there to make it viable that are in the the general area. Uh, So, um, yeah, Western Center will eventually kind of cut a portion of the property, uh, tee back into East McElroy. That will help internal circulation Mm -hmm. uh, for all the uses here. Uh, We're really pleased uh, 
to be working with Provident. They're capable of developing this out, all phases. So, um. so just, just as a comment to mm -hmm. my colleagues is that when we envisioned uh, allowing MF1 and MF2 in our community, in the city, it was envisioned that those high-density housing projects be located on the city's periphery. And this is a perfect example of that. It's right on 156, very quick access to 820, and very quick access to 35. And I think it's appropriately being considered here. Uh, I just had one question about the cottage product that you have. Mm-hmm. Uh, is it envisioned that those cottages have common area to be maintained, or is each yard going to be maintained by each individual owner? So the answer is both. Each individual yard will be attached to the house, just like a regular single family. So there, it's a it's a, a mini yard for per se. Uh, so that will be maintained by the by the occupant of the um, of the house. But there will also be an amenity center, so they will also have a pool, and they will also have a clubhouse, and so that will be maintained by uh, the leasing office and the management office. Okay, so which will also be on site. It, it's it's not it's not usual that people that have these smaller housing products actually own lawn mowers and things of that nature, but just because of storage problems. And, so and I know if, a lot just... of what we're doing is looking at some of the artificial turf products back oh, there okay. just for that very reason. Um, then also in the ones that we are currently developing, we'll offer a service in order so that someone will come in, use the back gate, and just get a whole row done you know, on a Tuesday or whatever uh, for a small fee. So we're, we're looking at both of those options as we're exploring this product and moving forward. Okay. Yeah, just the city. It's, it's almost not enough for a lawnmower. I mean, once you get exactly. in there, you do one square and you're done. So. Exactly. And I think that's what's been successful at Mariposa is that, you know, they have a com their yards are essentially common area and it's maintained by the complex. Uh, and here I could just see that becoming an issue or an eyesore if people just allow their yards to go crazy? So the way that this will be set up is there will be a property owners association and so that's where the buck will stop. So if anything, it's going to be up to them who will be on site all the time. They'll, they'll be officing out of there. It'll be up to them to police that. Um, so they'll give them a notice and then if it doesn't, then we can go and do it ourselves. So the intention there is that we're enforcing it, we're maintaining it before it ever gets to a, a level where it's an eyesore or a city problem. So that's the intention since we'll have that uh, management office on site. All right, thanks for that clarification. Sure. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. That's all I had. Mr. Beasley? Okay. Um, can we go back, Keith, can we go back to the, one of the first ones that shows the light industrial? That's my question. How about the colored ones? Because I like the, the pretty colors. There you go, perfect, that one. Yeah, so, you know, we're talking light industrial, and you mentioned medical, but it could be any light industrial because it's con consistent with what is next to it. I mean, the neighbor right there is a light industrial. I'm trying to remember which one it is, but it is a light industrial product. So it wouldn't really make a difference. It's across the street. It's across, what, Laverne, Levon from the rest of the activity. So it would make sense for that piece to be any light industrial. Um, and I understand that you don't, that's not decided yet, but I'm just sort of pointing that out, that that makes a lot of sense where it's located. Because I'm, I'm, in my mind, I'm driving on, East McElroy there and just thinking what all that is, and that makes a lot more sense. And, and I think the that curved area uh, community commercial piece will be very valuable. I think that will be sort of the highlight of this whole project, and I think we're we're happy to have the multifamily there, but I think the community commercial is what, what we're really looking for, what will we'll draw things. So, no, I, I think it's a great project. I'm, I'm fully supportive. Um, is there any other questions from the council? Um, we are in a public hearing, so anyone in the audience wants to speak on this? And anything else? For, for you, you, you can sit, sit down. down. I can come back. No, if thank you very much. Questions. Yeah, thank I appreciate you. that. So we are in public hearing. So anyone in the audience that wants to speak on this product, on this um, item, now's your time. You don't have to ask. You can just approach the microphone because it is a public hearing. So uh, please, anybody has any questions, comments? Now's the time. Uh, if not, um, anything else we need to add from a staff perspective? We good. All right, then at 619, I'll take us out of the public hearing, and I will entertain a motion. Yeah, I'll make a motion that we approve this as written. <laughs> Thank you, Valerie. I'll second. Do you all second? 
All those in favor, raise your right hand. All those opposed? Excellent. Thank you. Thank you all. Moving forward. Um, oh, actually, we want to go back to you. Aaron's here. Let's go back to item number five. Update on recruit, retail recruitment effort, Aaron. Retail recruitment efforts for that, Aaron Farm. Welcome. Awesome. Well, Mayor Council, it's good to be here. I hit the uh, trifecta of traffic on the way over here at a meeting in McKinney and trying to get from McKinney, Texas to Saginaw, Texas. Uh, in the middle of the afternoon, rush hour is not easy. And then I hit the train coming across here. So a few minutes late, so I, I apologize for that. But um, wanted to give you an update. Um, have had some, some really good conversations uh, recently with, with Gabe and Keith about what's happening from a retail perspective. Um, here in here in Saginaw, we're having some really some good success, even with what's going on with COVID-19. So we've got a presentation we're going to pull up here that Gabe's going to get up here in a second, um, and we'll get that. Uh, Aaron, that which, going. which one do you want, the COVID or the other Actually, one? Actually, just the power or the, just the PDA, not COVID. Yeah. Do I need to wear the mask while I'm speaking? Okay, good. So a couple of things I wanted to update you on. It's been a couple of months. It's hard to believe. Uh, you know, it seems, I guess, longer than that because everything that's been going on. But um, even during uh, COVID-19, I've, I've been really excited to see we've been getting more responses from retailers and restaurants than we ever have. <laughs> and I think it's because they were stuck at home like we were, um, you know, working from home, those sort of things. They, these, these site selectors, these retailers, these restaurants, they needed to kind of fill that pipeline so that, once we got through with COVID-19, knock on wood, hopefully sooner than later, they had that pipeline of deals getting ready to go. So what I wanted to show you, though, before we kind of jump into that and the recruitment effort, efforts here, um, we put together a COVID-19 impact analysis. And, you know, Mayor, you give great updates. I'll tell you that. I see on – I follow you all on Facebook, and, and you all are doing a great job of keeping the community updated. But I thought would be interesting as well is to just really look at um, what we're seeing from a visit standpoint. How many people are still shopping? How many people are, um, you know – coming here and, and, and still shopping and eating and doing those sort of things. And I will tell you, it's been interesting to see you haven't had nearly a drop-off or as much of a drop-off as, as, as I thought you would. But what, what's happened is, from, from the data we're about to look at, is Saginaw restaurants have, or Saginaw consumers have stayed at home. So your grocery stores have seen a bump. Your, your Walmart has seen a bump as far as number of visits and, and, and people shopping at the stores, which is positive from a, from a sales tax standpoint, which you likely won't have as large of a drop as maybe you wouldn't have if you didn't have those essential businesses. So what I wanted to look at here on the first slide here is Walmart. And, and I thought this was interesting, but this, this map that we're looking at here um, really starts in January. And it goes through the first week of June, so last or two weeks ago. And what you'll see, these are number of visits. So what you'll notice is in a lot of these communities we work in, we, we saw just complete drop-offs. So these are number of visits by consumers coming to the store. Your level. Um, you had a peak when that panic buying hit about the first week uh, or the first or second week of March. We had that panic buying. This, yeah, the toilet. This is I call this the uh, the TP peak or the toilet paper peak <laughs> in, in most of these graphs that we look at. Um, but this is positive. I mean, this shows us that people were still shopping, still eating, um, but staying close to home. And, uh, you know, not making as many visits per se, but, but your local residents were staying close. So your level, and what I wanted to show you is you, you've leveled out. So um, we're not seeing any e in decreases or increases, but the last couple of weeks you've leveled out from, from, from a standpoint of actually shopping at Walmart. Looking at the next slide here, this is just comparing year over year. So the orange on the graph here, so this is looking at January, February, March, April, May. Um, in April, you actually had uh, more visits to, to Walmart, as an example, than you did compared to 2020. So 2019 is, or 2019 is in, in orange there, and the yellow is in 2020. So you had a little, sorry, a little bit of a drop off in visits. But now as we get into May, we're, we're almost even from where we were last year. So I wanted to share that with you because we're not seeing as much of a drop off. I know this community thrives on sales tax. You need that to do a lot of the things with, with your budgets as do others. So you're not seeing a huge drop there. We also looked at on the next slide here, we looked at grocery. Same sort of thing here. Um, so grocery here would be um, uh, really your two grocery stores. So you, you've got, you're pretty even. You, again, in this map, we have the, the toilet paper peak I talked about there, the, the panic buying peak. But you've been pretty level there. So we haven't really seen a tremendous drop off in, in consumers. So from a sales tax standpoint, that's going to be positive. And even from a grocery standpoint, we were buying more paper goods in the last couple months than we had in the past. So you're going to see increases in sales tax as it relates to grocery stores. 
it's not a one-to-one -one correlation visits to sales tax, but we are seeing a positive correlation there. And then looking at the next slide, um, same sort of thing. You actually had more spending at grocery stores in 2020 than you did in 2019 for each of the months of March, really January, February, March, April, and May. You were up. So I wanted to just kind of share that with you. And then lastly, we looked at uh, restaurants. And, and this looked at fast, uh, fast food restaurants, but we also looked at casual sit-down restaurants. And you did see a drop-off um, as, you know, we all started staying at home towards the end of March there. But again, it started to level out and actually going back up. So your restaurants here, I, I paid a lot of attention to that. A lot of your restaurants did really good jobs with the curbside and delivery and carry out. So I wanted to just kind of share with you, I mean, if you just listen to what you see on the media, a lot of times it just seems all doom and gloom as it comes to retail and restaurants. It's not nearly as bad as we think it could be, um, especially for Saginaw, because again, a lot of these businesses, your grocery stores, your superstore, they were considered essential businesses, so they were able to stay open. So flipping to the next slide here, the last one I'll show you here, we did obviously see a drop off in number of visits. You can see uh, yellow 2020 for March, April, and May. Uh, that was to be expected, but you know, really only operating about 60, 50 to 60%, so not nearly as bad as it could be. So I just wanted to share this with you. Um, we're gonna continue to, to track this data as we kind of come out of the pandemic, hopefully and in, in, in down the road. So very good uh, information here, but wanted you to see that because I don't think the impacts from a sales tax standpoint are gonna be as bad as, as maybe some other communities in the region. Can we get this, put this on the website? Can, is this something we can share and put on the website? I, yeah, and, and I was, actually, there's a full I, there's a full report too. Sorry. Okay. Andrew, I was specifically on. thinking because with the restaurants, I got lots of calls early on from restaurant owners, very very nervous, very sure. worried. And so, if they could see some of this that you know it wasn't as bad as maybe we thought, or just just the data, I think that would, would help folks. Yeah, absolutely. And the and the positive is on really all of these maps, we're seeing an increase. Mm -hmm. So so people are getting back out again. Yeah. Social distancing, but being more careful about it and and, and those sort of things. So I just wanted to share that with you. We've we've gone through a couple of those months looking at this. Keith and, and Gabe and I have looked at this, just trying to get a feel and just kind of track where the retail industry is in Saginaw. So really, again, like I said, not nearly as bad as it's been, uh, or as bad as it could have been. Um, I did want to share with you, we put together a retail dashboard, and if you've been on the economic development um, site uh, of the website there, um, we have uploaded um, what we call a retail dashboard, and it's a standalone uh, kind of retail website, but again, it's also been embedded on uh, the city's website. And what we've done there, this is just a, just a little snapshot there, but just so you remember, this is the retail trade area. This is the information that we're sharing uh, with the prospects. They can download those reports at this website. They can, they can access them. We're sending them out. But if we'll flip to that next slide, this slide Keith, if you don't mind, um, this is kind of what that website looks like. But it's also an internet, it's also an, uh, an application. So you can pull it up on your iPad. As we're meeting with developers and retailers over the next couple of weeks, Keith, as you meet with potential prospects, being able to pull this up, maybe when you're in the car with them, driving around and just giving a, a prospect a tour, what we're trying to do is we've tried to create a one-stop shop. So um, many times, I mean, it could be right now, there could be a prospect, whether it was retail, industrial, hotel prospect, whoever it might be, chances are they could be on your website right now looking for things. That's the first place we go nowadays. So we wanted to make sure that not only do we have this data or do you all have this data, but it's easy to access. So I just wanted to share that with you. If you, ha if you haven't had a chance, I'd encourage you to go to the economic development page of the website and, and really check this out. A lot of good information, a lot of good data in there. There's also an interactive mapping application in there as well. I'm really excited about this. Um, we are actually going to be uploading sites to this. So on your website, and you've already got some available property, an available property tool on your website, but we're also going to make it available on the internet, or on the, uh, the application, the iPad app. Um, and it works not just on iPad, but, but any kind of computer. We're going to make it available on there. They'll be able to click, anybody will be able to click on a specific site on this map, run reports around the site. Really, again, a one-stop shop. And I will tell you this. Um, so kudos to y'all, but I was on a, on a conference call this morning with the community. Um, they had no idea we were working with Saginaw. Um, they have been going to your website, uh, your economic development website, and this is the city of Lake Dallas. And they said, hey, we want our website to look like the city of Lake Dallas. And I think, you, Gabe, you might know the city manager over there, but he said, this is what, this is what we need. We need the data that's there. So y'all, just kudos to y'all on your website because 
even another city noticed that, hey, this is, this is what it means. So we've just added some additional data to it. Um, but now we're going to talk about recruitment. So I just wanted to give you kind of a heads up on some of the things that have been working um, recently. Now, from a recruitment standpoint, we, we talked about this, but, but you can't just wait on prospects to come to you. Y- y'all have done great. Y- y'all have had some retail and restaurants, but as you know, the retail industry just gets more competitive, you've got to be out there pitching Saginaw to potential prospects. So that's, that's why we're on board. So just to give you uh, just a recap on that process, we're, we're sending out emails. We're, we're, we're making phone calls. We're attending trade shows. Um, we are uh, bringing prospects to this market in person meetings that hopefully will kick back off again now that uh, we can kind of get together a little bit again. Uh, but we, it's an A to Z approach. If, if we're going to be talking to a, to a prospect, we want to get them here. Uh, once you get them to Saginaw, it's a lot easier to sell the community to them. They see that traffic that I just came through. That's a lot of cars. Uh, and from a retailer's point of view, that's what they like to see. So that's what the recruitment process looks like. But some specific notes that I want to really share with you um, on here. Uh, so we really began recruitment in March. So that's right when COVID hit. I was a little worried, to be honest with you. None of us in the retail industry were expecting this. Um, I was, In fact, I think I had told uh, Gabe and Keith – this is the best the retail industry has been in a long time. Uh, and that was the first week of March and then COVID-19 hit. We were worried. What's going to happen with retail? Is it just going to completely shut down? Well, like I showed you on that data, it's, it's not been as bad as expected. Uh, but it was very active. We had a lot of prospects calling us. Um, we were talking to prospects. Like I said, we were getting responses from retailers and developers that almost never call us back or almost never email us. They were actually interacting with us. Um, again, I think they're trying to fill their pipeline so that the rest of 2020 and 2021 is, is active. And that's really in this recruitment process, that's what we're looking at, is we're looking at the end of 2020 into 2021. That's when you're going to see a lot of these development projects really happening that we're talking about right now. So we're currently working off of a, a, a list of prospects that are it's about 20 to 25 right now. Um, we, when I say prospects, um, you have to fit the criteria they look for. Your trade area has to be large enough for these retailers and restaurants. Um, you have to fit their demographics they look for, the age, the income, those sort of things. So right now we're working off of a list about, of about 20 to 25. And really our focus is finding out if they have interest in, in, in Saginaw, getting them the information, but then also getting them sites. We've been doing this for, for quite some time, and what we've found speeds up the process is if you can get them sites ahead of time. So say we're working with a casual sit-down restaurant, and we know they need an acre and a half to, to really – an acre and a half site to make it work. We are, we are providing them those sites. So in Saginaw, I can think of three or four acre and a half sites off the top of my head that fit. Those are the ones that we've been pitching to these prospects and it's amazing. It just speeds up the process. They don't have to send somebody here to find a site. Now, they're going to come out and check it, but we're, we're doing a lot of that legwork for them, if that makes sense. So that's some of the recruitment efforts that have, that have taken place uh, really in the last couple of months. Right now, and I'm, I'm happy to kind of share this stuff with you but, uh, or these, these results with you, but we're currently working with a hotel chain. Um, that is, is actually going to be locating in Saginaw. Uh, they've got it narrowed down to really one site, and uh, franchisee loves the market, just trying to get that, that going there. So we're excited about a hotel chain. It'd be somewhere around like the 40 to 50 rooms um, is what we're hearing right now. As we get a little bit more details on that, we'll share more with you. Um, we're also working with a couple of restaurant operators that are looking for locations uh, here. Um, we've done a lot of work in this region. Um, a couple of these restaurants that we were talking to, we helped locate um, in a couple of your neighboring communities in the region. And using those contacts, we were able to get them interested in, in Saginaw. So that's where I talked about the acre to acre and a half sites that we're putting uh, these prospects in touch with. So we've got a couple of restaurants interested. And then we've also talked to a grocery store, a Texas-based grocery store that's expanding into this region. Um, I don't want to get anybody, anybody's hopes up yet, uh, but we have talked to a grocery that uh, they are expanding in this region. They've agreed to look at a couple of different sites that we have to share with them. So I wanted to let you know about that. And then one thing that we had talked about, uh, specifically Gabe, uh, Keith and myself have talked about, is an entertainment, a family entertainment user for this, for this market. We had a good lead, and it's still a good lead with, a, with an entertainment user. However, they're still shut down, or most of them are still shut down. Um, so I expect the entertainment 
uh, really to kind of kind of speed up again, probably August time period. You know, most of these theaters and most of the entertainment users, some of them are opening next week. Some of them are opening July 1st. So I think they're going to probably – we'll see where they want to operate for about a month, and then we're going to start talking to them again. So to only be a couple months into this and have some prospects, um, I mean, I'm really excited about the hotel prospects. Um, y- y'all need a good hotel here. Um, and so that's, uh, that's, that's really what I wanted to share with you tonight is, um, there's some, some really some good things happening now. I think things are going to start speeding up a good bit. Um, we have put together a project management system that, uh, Gabe and Keith have access to where we're logging all of our, con- our con- conversations in there. So if we talk to a retailer that same day, we're, we're logging that in there so that if somebody walks into Keith's office, somebody walks into Gabe's office, uh, they have notes on there. We have notes on there so that we're all up to speed on the recruitment process. Um, but we're excited um, with, with the interest there. I, I do think it's going to pick up even more uh, as we come out of COVID-19. Um, but would love to, I, I guess, answer any questions, yeah. Mayor, if that's all right, if there aren't sure. any. Yeah, Council, any questions for Aaron? First of all, great presentation. I appreciate oh, the information. Great. Excellent. So what questions do you all have? Mary? Oh, well, I just wanted to say I appreciate everything you're doing. And, yes, ma'am. Uh, you know, anybody who's watching who is a resident who likes to see their property taxes reduced, our goal, as most cities have a goal, to get most of their revenue from sales tax. Sure. And so the more, more of these kind of developments we can have, we'll then be ever able to lower the property taxes. Yes, ma'am. And I didn't really share much of this, uh, in the, but some of those sites that we're looking at, um, kind of even the site that was talked about today, there's going to be some, some retail potential at some of these sites. Um, we're paying close attention to those sites as they, as they become available from a retail standpoint. We, we've tried to talk to uh, most of the property owners that have you know, major retail sites in the community. We've tried to talk to the developers that control a lot of those and brokers that control a lot of those so that as we get prospects, we can hand them off or bring them directly to them to help, like I said, speed up this process. But um, one other thing, I forgot to mention, Keith, but I'm going to be speaking, um, hopefully, at, at one of your next, what, 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 what is that meeting called? Um, I just can't think of it. The local business forum, local business forum okay. coming up. Now, I think we got to figure out how that's going to take place going forward, but we are going to be meeting with local businesses as well. So um, I know when, when I talked to the council last, you said, hey, we don't want to forget about the local businesses or the small businesses. So I, I forgot to mention that, but I want to show that we're, especially as a lot of these businesses and these restaurants are kind of coming out of COVID-19 and getting going again, we've got a lot of good data for them and some mm-hmm. things we want to share with them. So once we kind of figure out that date or confirm that date, I guess uh, we'll be be doing that as well. So I'm sorry, I forgot to mention okay. that. Okay. Other questions? So we have about 40 acres now of, of new development uh, between the square and now Providence, yep. what they're doing. What efforts are being made to coordinate closely with those developers? Yeah. She's cheating because she's sitting in the room right now, but, <laughs> but just I would like to know that there's some of that going on uh, where we've got Aaron working with them and also working with prospects to point to those developments as well. Yeah, well, and, and I'll take that if that's all right. But um, so, so Gabe and Keith both have been great about bringing me up to speed and bringing my team up to speed on, on what properties are available, which are, which are coming on board, you know, and when they're coming on board. So ideally, we would have already met in person with mm-hmm. these developers. But really, I think the next month, or so is going to be really kind of imperative for what you're talking about here to actually have some sit downs and look at these. Now we have site plans for, for just about every one of the, the properties that you're talking about and what those are going to look at. So we're already kind of starting to do that. But as we go forward and especially as we get these prospects to the market, I'm going to have to be, you know, really communicating well with, with the developers on these properties because when we get them here for site tours and, and those sort of things, we're, we're going to want to walk some of those properties or start looking at some of those things. So I really, we would have liked to have done this over the last month or two, but just because of kind of COVID-19 and everything, we haven't been able to do that. But going sure. forward, the next month or so, I think is going to be incredibly important for that. And so Aaron, I think just marketing yourself as a, a broker labor. Yeah to these yeah. developers would be beneficial for us and you know who they are now 
Well, and we become, I'll, I'll be honest with you, um, we, we typically become best friends uh, of those brokers and of those developers because mm-hmm. we're not taking a commission or anything like that. Uh, we, You're generating we're, leads. We're generating leads and, mm-hmm. and bringing them to them. And, and like I said, we're not taking anything from that. So that's the, you know, like I said, we become best friends with a lot of these. And, and we have relationships with, with several of them that um, are already in this market uh, doing deals in this market. So. All right. Yeah, and we've got a couple of brokers that are that are looking at doing some deals. I know Keith has talked to one broker that I'm working with as well. Um, that's kind of regional here. That's looking to bring mm-hmm. in two or three different restaurants, mm-hmm. um, or maybe two restaurants and then another user as well. Um, so that's the best thing we can do is just communicate and, and, like you said, get to know these developers, especially the site plans and what they're planning there, mm-hmm. so that we can match up the prospects at the right site. Sure. Yeah. Well, thanks, Aaron. Appreciate Absolutely. it. Council, other questions? Thanks, sir. I appreciate the update. Well, thank, Let's keep thanks. up the good work. Yeah, thanks for having us. We'll, we'll be back in front of you all before too long, and uh, appreciate the time today. Well, thank thanks, Aaron. Appreciate you. Mayor, if I could add something real quick. Sure, Keith. Uh, I, don't have, I don't have the exact numbers in front of me, but it is listed on our website. Um, we, we've sent it out on social media, and it will be in our next newsletter when Aaron was talking about uh, sales tax and how, what our levels are. We were very pleased when we got our numbers in for April's, our April numbers, and we were expecting probably a 15% drop, and a lot of cities experienced that. You know, some cities experienced as much as a 45% um, loss compared to, you know, April of 2020 to 2019. A lot of them were in the double digits uh, loss, uh, 20%. That's, that's significant. We, Saginaw, Texas, we were 2.97% higher than we were a year ago in April. That's good news. Very good news. All right, thank you, guys. All right, moving forward, item number seven, consideration action regarding approved funds for the art and community program mural at Highland Station Park. For that, Keith Reinhardt. There we go. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, as we have done in the past with our, our Keep Saginaw our Beautiful Committee, um, doing different murals, bringing art to our community. We've done a lot of artwork in our parks in Willow Creek Park. Um, we've had a mural that was painted on the north side, but southbound of uh, north, Northwest Plumbing, a wonderful historic mural. As we speak, we have another mural that, that you approved uh, back in May uh, that's being painted at, on, at JR's uh, cafe on the north side, southbound. Uh, which uh, JR's is the original uh, Green's Grocery. He's down there right now. His, na- his na- name is Adam Davenport. I, I suggest you stop by. Uh, don't just take a picture and go talk to him. As long as you have about two hours to talk, because I got the guy. Cause he's got he, he's got some lungs on him. He'll talk to you. But great guy. But what I've got for you today is um, another mural, a smaller scale, but another mural. Uh, we're looking at uh, talking with uh, an, a local artist that we've used actually in, in Willow Creek Park for a number of different projects and um, looking at a spot in, in Highland Station Park. And we were looking kind of in, in the east, northeast side of town, trying to find a structure where we could paint and, and do a mural. And one of the, the spots that we found actually was uh, a restroom, the Willow Creek Park restroom uh, right behind uh, High Country. Uh, the, the, you know, there's four walls to it, but what we're looking at doing is is a um, three-walled um, art 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 display uh, of this. This was the art piece that she came up with, and what she wanted to do is not just paint it herself. She wanted to make it a community event. Uh, we've held off doing this. Was this was actually supposed to come to you back in March, uh, but with everything that happened, it got delayed, as did uh, with. Um, the mural that's going on right now. This one's been delayed a little more since what, what she's looking at doing is, is a community event where she has the community helper paint it. Uh, so when things settle down and, and, and we feel safe for the community to get, uh, to get together to paint this, um, they're going to do this. What the, the cost of this would be uh, for $750, and that's for, that's for materials. It would be on three of the three walls three of the exterior walls of, the, of that restroom. It's about a that, 10 by 10, 8 by 8 by 8 or 10 by 10, I can't remember. And that 750 is from the Keep Saigon Beautiful, that's from their fund, that's, that's donations, correct. right? Correct. The dollar, one, $1 donation, Excellent. yes. 
Any questions for Keith on this wonderful project? Mary? Um, I don't have a question, but I, along with everyone on the council, I'm sure is really proud of all of the beautification efforts that have taken place in the past year or two. And I noticed <clears throat> the publication Texas Town and Cities, which is put out by the Texas Municipal League. Right now it's just online, but they are going to start publishing it hard copy again once the COVID thing settles down. And there is an opportunity for cities to apply to showcase themselves mm -hmm. as being a city who has made strides in beautification. So looking on down the road, I think it would be a good idea for us to to put our names in the hat for that. Absolutely. It's a great idea. And the other thing is if we could find the money, uh, I think sculptures would be nice. And also we've had some emails from companies that even do lighting on water towers. Mm-hmm for like Christmas and the different times of the year. We, we came to you about, uh, about a year ago talking about uh, different ideas that the Keep Saginaw Beautiful community had about bringing art to the community. We had an art policy that, that was passed by council and uh, things that we talked about were sculptures and, and last year for the, I think, I don't know if it was the first time because I've only been involved with the committee for seven years, I guess, or six or seven years, but uh, we had, I think it was $25,000 that the council approved uh, for art in, in, in the parks, and some of that could have been um, whether mural or, or sculpture. Uh, that, that's something that, that, that keeps talking a beautiful committee is very interested in doing. Other questions, other comments? All right. Thank you, Keith. If not, I will entertain a motion for approve this money. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make uh, a motion that we approve the funds for art in the community. Thank you, Charlie. Valerie, second. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Those opposed? Excellent. Good work, guys. Moving forward, we are on item number, where is it? Ah, item number eight. Consideration and action regarding resolution 2020-16, direction of publication of notice of intention to issue combination tax and revenue certificates of obligation and resolving other matters related to the subject. For that, Finance Director Kim Quinn. Thank you, Mayor and City Council. If you recall, after you um, had the report from the Bond Committee that you had expressed interest in beginning some of these projects as far as design um, so that um, we would be ready to go with, with the projects and we, um, once, once we could find the funding for the actual construction. So back in... March, um, you authorized us to begin spending up to $8.5 million on the design portion of the projects with the intent to reimburse with certificates of obligation later in the summer. We, wait, we were planning on waiting later into the summer so that we, could, we would have a better idea of what our property values are going to be in order to keep the debt service portion of the tax rate the same. Um, then after we um, went along a little bit and talked about um, the priority of the fire station and looked at the possibility of uh, adding more debt to the $8.5 million um, for the construction of the fire station. Um, so that brings us to the, to the total um, that we're looking at now. And in order, we're at the point now that we need to... Um, publish a notice of intent. Um, we'll publish it two times in a newspaper and on our website. Um, and, um, and so that's what this is. This is um, authorizing us to, to go ahead and publish and say that this is our intent to do it. Um, it gives the public notice that this is what you intend to do. Um, we have um, Mark McClaney with SAMCO here to answer questions and to go through the timeline. Um, we, as I mentioned before, um, we, got our June, we got our June values and they weren't as high as we were hoping. 
we can't guarantee at any point in time that we can do the full $23.5 million, or at least we can't guarantee that right now. Um, based on our values, the June values weren't as high as what we were hoping they were going to be. But what you can do is um, say that you intend to, to issue 235 and come down from there once we get the July certified values. So it's like the tax rate, we advertise at the highest and you can always go down from there, but you couldn't advertise a lower amount and go up without starting the whole process over. So Mark's here to um, answer any questions you may have regarding the timeline. There's also a, a, a schedule with um, possible scenarios on um, tax rate impact. And, and that's a great introduction. Uh, Kim did a great job on that. My name is Mark McClellan with Samco Capital Markets. I've worked with the city for a long time. Mayor, uh, I know I may sound like a broken record because I've been saying this is going to be the lowest interest rates we've ever had for some time. <laughs> and it keeps, you know, it's going to be higher next year or two years from now. And I keep being wrong. Um, Kim is exactly right. We're here to do a notice of intention for an amount not to exceed $23.5 million. That $23.5 million, what we're going to tell the voters, your citizens, is that we're going to be here on August 18th, and that's on the timetable, to actually sell the obligations. So you're not selling anything today. You're notifying your voters and your citizens that this is what you intend to do. That gets published two times in the paper and on your website and lists the projects. So prior to the sale of August 18th, we will have final values and we'll be able to structure the debt in a way that has uh, meets our goal. Our goal is to maximize our borrowing and maintain the 17.33 cent INS tax rate. So everything is moving forward. We wish we would have better taxable values at this point, but we've talked about a lot of COVID-19. There's lots of delays coming out of TAD, Tarrant County Appraisal District. So we continue to look forward to this. Uh, our interest rates are going to be very, very competitive, very low, um, and we're going to squeeze as much as we can and maintain that 17.3 cent tax rate. Uh, bond market is has been as good as market, other than about a four week period during COVID-19 when people were not, were just afraid of everything, interest rates have continued to come down except for that, that one month period. And we're really seeing uh, literally all time lows on 20 year debt. So uh, timing is good. We need some more information from the appraisal district, finalized information, and we'll be very close to hitting this target of 23 and a half if we don't hit it. And so that I'll turn it over to questions from you all, um, or I can go into the analysis, which is the second page after the timetable. All right, anybody got questions on the, the timing before we move into page two? Yeah, I just have a couple of comments. I just, since we're talking about uh, the 8.5 million, which we really have all rallied around, and we've agreed that, that we've got to spend that money here within the next 12 month horizon. And looking at uh, BRW's uh, proposed timeline, construction on the fire station really wouldn't start until June of 2021, which really puts us issuing CO debt about 10 months early. And if we were lucky enough to get the same 1.1% bond, that's still around eight grand a month that we would be spending in interest. And we'd be spending eight grand a month, 10, 10 months ahead of starting construction. So that's about $80,000. Now, what that boils down to, in my mind, if rates tick up as much as 80 basis points, we just lost $70,000 of the $80,000 we would have spent. So we're kind of taking a bet here. We're betting that if we do this, all 23 million this year, here in August, that we're going to take on a little bit of additional interest before we need the money. But if rates do tick back up first quarter of next year, or when we're ready to reissue or issue new COs in the next fiscal year, uh, we could lose that as, as much as that, just in an interest rate increase. 
So knowing that we're kind of splitting some hairs here, what, what are your thoughts about potentially deferring some of that money into a future CO into the next fiscal year? Um, the most expensive dollar that you borrow is the first dollar. This is excluding interest rates. The cheapest dollar you borrow is the last yes. one. So economies of scale. So if you know you're going to need the project mm -hmm. and you're comfortable with this borrowing, typically what we would do is we'd lump three years worth of projects into one, mm -hmm. uh, into one year. Yes, you're going to be paying interest. Great point. But we're also, in, <laughs> and not very well, but we're also going to earn interest. Uh, lower than where, what we would like to see right now. Uh, Kim's dealing with that on all her cash. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So there is, and that's the negative arbitrage. We're pay, we'll be paying higher rates than we're, um, than we're earning in that account. Hopefully at some point they'll come together. So if you said we want to just wait, you're going to roll the die, because right now we are at low, all-time lows, mm -hmm. literally all-time lows. Agreed. Um, will we be at all-time lows next year? I've been wrong, as I said to the mayor, <laughs> for, for 10 years now. Um, is the chance of it going higher greater than the chance of it going lower? I fully believe that. I agree with that. Um, so then it comes to, you know, we're not doing three years worth of projects, we're doing two years worth of projects. Mm -hmm. So you're getting the economies of scale. Mm -hmm. um, and so because of that, I would be moving forward. Um, it doesn't matter if, if the council said, let's just, let's just do $15 million. We could come back next year and do the, the balance. But you're going to be paying probably $50,000 more by doing two separate issues, roughly yes. speaking, of $15 million than one of twenty-three and a half. and a half. I guess 15 and 15 don't equal 30, but 12 and a half and 12 and a half. Uh, Should the cost of issue. That's correct. So... Um, you know, roughly speaking, because you know, right off the top, you would have a fifteen thousand mm -hmm. dollar bond rating fee two years in a row mm -hmm. that we wouldn't get, and then the other bond council FAs and underwriters all charge less the bigger the bond. Mm -hmm. So I'd say probably I said fifty off the top, probably thirty five thousand <laughs> is immediate savings by lumping it together. Um, that I don't disagree with you on the you know eighty thousand dollars of interest carry. Perhaps we get 25 of that back on interest earnings. Um, and, and one of the ways to do that is to, you know, that, that money will be a year from being used. Mm -hmm. So we can, and, and I'm not an investment person, but we can go out and put $15 million in an account a year from now, a CD, you know, or, or CDRs where they're mm -hmm. guaranteed, you mm -hmm. know, treasuries aren't paying anything, but something decent that gets you a better rate of return than what we're getting just in uh, text pool or maybe text pool prime or whatever it is, something that has a term sure. out a year to earn as much as you can because that money is just going to be sitting there. Sure. But if you know you're going to proceed and you're going to need the money, mm -hmm. then it's better to get it now than waiting and rolling the dice again next year. Um, in and, and perhaps in August, we're going to say this is like March and we can't get rates. But we're selling bonds. Uh, we would sell bonds about two and a quarter right now on a 20-year loan. Um, in March, when we were that one-month period, these would be going at 4.5% if that was the time we'd sell. Now, I would have said let's table this and start again. Mm -hmm. But what happens if that's where we are in next year just because of COVID coming back, whatever it is, the uncertainty? We may have that uncertainty in August, and we are not committed to proceed mm -hmm. in August. Mm -hmm. um, you won't have bonds issued until the council authorizes it, and so then we'll know the final taxable values. We will then know what the tax rate impact would be. We would know what the final interest rate is. Mm -hmm. And so all of the uncertainty is gone with the assumption that you need that money next year. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Yeah. I mean, bottom line is that the, the only reason that I have supported uh, doing a CO in, under these circumstances is because there are two markets 
that we can take advantage of immediately. We can take advantage of the very low mm -hmm. interest market, and we can take advantage of the very quickly declining construction cost mm -hmm. market. So that's something you really can't sync up in an election cycle. Mm -hmm. So by taking that on here on the dais, you know, I just want to make sure that we're considering what it is when we make this decision to go to the full $23 million, that there's a little bit of risk there that we could spend a little money. But what you've explained to me tells me that if we take the swing upward in interest rates, even if it's as much I calculate around 85 basis points, but when you add the cost to issue the second go around, we've lost it all. Mm -hmm. So I, th I think that advice is sound, and that's all the questions that I had. You know, Patty, you make a good point. One thing we do control is we can try to pull in that construction date, too. There's no reason to say it. He, Gary and his next. group can fast track you know? this thing and be under construction in January. Maybe we save a month. I don't know. But we have, we have some control over that. Go up. Yes, Gabe. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, just one comment and, and great comments from Mark and Council Member Farr. Um, it's our hope um, to also have uh, Knowles, the Knowles project, in a state where it could be bid, especially the northernmost section where there's flooding issues. So, um, you know, in a perfect scenario, we know or have a guaranteed maximum, at least a threshold of what a fire station would cost. Whatever we have left, we can throw into that north section of Knowles. So if you'll recall our last meeting, um, or maybe two meetings back, we got bids on a um, curb and gutter replacement mm -hmm. at like a 40% discount. So I think to council members far, uh, far as points, we're hitting the market with really favorable interest rates, courtesy of Mark McClaney. Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe Jay Powell, I'll send him a thank you note. Um, Mark's a little more interesting to, inter <laughs> to listen to than the Fed. but. Um, but also, you know, we've got contractors that want work, as you know. Um, yes, the next page is a spreadsheet. I'm going to really take you to the far right-hand column. Uh, that's your tax rate impact. Uh, we sell all of these. It's structured in a way that we hit 17.73 cents. And again, we will know what the final value is by the time we sell this, so we can target that exactly. Now, what you've done, you all have heard me say this before, you all have managed fiscally so well over the last 10 years that you have resources. You have an INS fund balance of roughly a million two, a million three, um, that can only be used for debt service, mm -hmm. can't be used for anything else. And that's not by overcharging over the years. That's for delinquent taxes coming in, coming in, coming in uh, each year. Some's going to the general fund, some's going into the M&O, or we're calculating at 98% and we get 100%. Uh, so that money does start accumulating, and we're going in second column from the right, in, in what we hope is the worst-case scenario, we're using $762,000 of that. So if, it, if growth is a little slower, we may use a little bit more. If growth is a little faster, we will use less of it. And perhaps the next time you have a big bond issue, we'll use the same strategy again. But how you've structured and what you have in the bank and how you've managed fiscally helps you have the flexibility to meet the promises that you all make. Because the last thing, if, if I'm sitting up here or my partner Andrew, Kim, or Gabe, and we say we're going to hit 17.73 cents and we don't, then you're asking us collectively why we didn't hit that and why do we have to change our tax rate. And so having the cash in a reserve fund, INS reserves, that can't be used for anything but debt service, gives us more confidence because we don't know what's going to happen next year's taxable values. Um, but it gives us a cushion that with what's going on in the retail, with what's going on um, uh, with the what is it, Beth's uh, project, the Providence project, we know two or three years from now our values are going to be back increasing again. So it gives us the comfort. So all of this being said, we, we've, we're estimating high in today's interest rate market compared to if we sold today, giving us cushion there. We have INS fund balance. And we have structuring ability all the way up to the day of the pricing. 
in order to hit the target of 17.73 cents. And a lot of thought's been put into this, uh, primarily, uh, and I won't take credit for it, Gabe, Kim, and Andrew, my partner. And they've spent a lot of time looking at lots of different iterations of how we can get to the goals that the city has set. And, and I think we can, we can do that, and we will get, as I said, we'll know more when we're here in August. Well, I think it's important to, to, to point out, you know, we are talking a big number, $23.5 is a lot of money. But we are targeting, as we mentioned, that 17 cents, so not an increase in taxes. So you Correct. get this huge amount of projects for the city, the benefit of the citizens, with no tax rate increase. That's really the, the bottom line takeaway from this. And so I want to make sure we stress that for folks maybe that are listening at home or watch this later. That's really what our goal is for this all, this discussion, all this, is to keep the tax rate exactly where it is. So you, the citizens get a huge benefit with no increase in taxes. So that's, that's our goal. That's why we're working through all this. We're putting our heads together, and Kim and has certainly done a lot of work on this. So, uh, Other questions for, for Mark? So we feel like the using the INS fund balance for ballasting the marketplace. That's a good, good choice of words. Uh, it, are we setting a threshold at 750000 or are we going to allow it to go more than that? Well, that's good. I mean, there, there's... One of the things Kim said, there's no way we can guarantee anything. What if values decline next year? Mm -hmm. That's now, you know, so we have a million two. Mm -hmm. We're using it, you know, 750. We could use all a million two. Mm -hmm. It may mean the next year, if values don't increase, that we have to raise taxes. Mm -hmm. But based upon the best bit of information that we have, being conservative, not using all million two right. gives us the flexibility uh, to buy another year. Um, but we cannot make promises, uh, even if we had flat growth and um, sold these bonds and, and weren't projecting increase in values, there's always a chance for decrease in values and or change in law or whatever it may right. be. You, the council may add, um, uh, you know, raise exemptions. Well, all of a sudden that hits into the values and that costs taxpayer money. I mean, it has to be made up elsewhere. Mm -hmm. So in the snapshot of today, thinking what could go wrong, mm -hmm. I think we were very conservative. Could it go worse than what we're planning? It certainly could. Well, I'm talking in the first fiscal year, the first year. Oh, the first year. Not, we're not using, more than 750. We're, no, no, that's three over three years that we're using that. Um, if you okay. look at the, uh, on that second page, okay. um, second column from the right, we're, we're estimating use of about 250000 the first year, 297, mm -hmm. 210, and then nothing else. Combined 762000 over three years. Okay. And so I, I'm sorry I didn't, yeah, it's, we wouldn't use, I wouldn't want to use all million two in one year unless you said that's too much. We're pulling that money down. Yeah, that, that would be it would be false representation of what that tax rate impact mm -hmm. would be. Mm -hmm. So I just want to make sure that we're we're not just putting a whole lot on the front end and then next year it's Rolling go to the taxpayer and say, gotcha. Right, no. Okay. All right, that makes sense. Appreciate it. Thanks for the clarification. Again, Andrew, Gabe, and Kim looked at this so many different ways, um, and I'm just the one that had to come and make the presentation. They did the work on this one. Yeah. Council Member Farr, you'll also notice, and we've talked about this before, um, part of the way why the whole um, bond committee came up to begin with was that in fiscal year, between fiscal year 20 and 21, our current debt that we have outstanding is about to drop off. So we're paying off old issues. And so that also gives us capacity. And then in two years, you'll see um, another drop off. Mm -hmm. So. So not only do we have the fund balance, but we also have that working for us. Thanks, Kim. <coughs> Other questions for Mark? If there are no other questions, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Mary, I move that we allow staff to proceed with the NOI. All those in favor? Any opposed? All right. Thank you, staff. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mary. Appreciate good it. Look forward you. to it. It's good to be here. All right, moving forward, we are at item number nine, consideration action regarding Chapter 380 Economic Development Agreement with CFJ Manufacturing. For that, Keith Reinhardt. 
I'm abstaining from oh. this one. So. Thank you, sir. So, let's step I understand. I meant to, to make that announcement. Thank you for reminding me, Charles. <laughs> All right. Keith, moving forward. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, coming to you tonight, we had briefly talked to you about this uh, at a previous uh, executive session about um, a 380 agreement with um, CFJ Manufacturing, which they have purchased a, the existing car wash on the south, end, south side of town uh, on the, off the boulevard and are wanting to... Um, one of, one of the great things about, about this, this idea is, um, before I go any further, is that this is actually something that is, as a council, you've all talked about. Maybe not the car wash per se, but it's something that you've talked about in the citizens, um, citizen summit. The residents uh, spoke and things that, some of the things that they wanted to do was to, you know, was to, for us as a city to look at redevelopment. And I've talked to you all about the different things that I do in my job and you've heard some of it with, with Aaron and uh, retail coaches is, is recruitment. And that's certainly part of that and, and taking care of our existing businesses, but also uh, the redevelopment of, of some areas. And that's what, that's what this is right here. Um, the 380 agreement is, is offering incentives. Um, what kind of what it is, it helps to promote economic development, stimulate business and, a, and commercial activity in an area. Uh, with that purchase of that property, the, the property owner had the uh, vision of removing that car wash and relocating uh, or constructing a new building in that spot uh, to help start that ball rolling of, of the redevelopment of, of the southern uh, entrance of Saginaw. Um, does anybody have any questions? Questions? Anybody? <laughs> and I personally have said some very bad words about that uh, that car wash, so I apologize, but I, I'm glad it's going. And, and I fully support their efforts. Uh, good questions, folks? No, sir. Any other questions? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Valor, draw a second. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Those? Not. And Mr. Beasley abstains. Thank you, Keith. All right, so I think we're moving forward to, I think he stays away for the next one, too. Isn't that correct? Yeah. He said, yeah. So one more, sorry. Okay. So item number 10, consideration action regarding contract with Burleson demolition for the demolition of a pre- of uh, the car wash we just mentioned. Keith, back yes, to you. Yes, thank you. Uh, redevelopment, as I said, is very exciting. It's, it's probably one of the more exciting parts of my job. And uh, that's what we're, we're bringing to you with the last item and this item. Uh, we got a bid from uh, Burleson Demolition for $12,500 uh, to, to demolish the facility. And um, if you have any questions, I'd be glad to, have, to answer. And let me show you some pictures real quick. Just for, just for clarification of the car wash, we're talking about the existing car wash, as you can see right here. Uh, right behind what is known as the car wash is where the vacuuming takes place. That is coming down also. And there will be some, um, as, as in our car, all car washes like this, there's a drain, which happens to be underground, so that the removal of that too. Any questions? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Mayor, make a motion that we approve the consideration that you are in contract with us and demolition to get that car parked in the office of the building. Thank you, Valerie. Second. Patrick, second. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Those opposed, there are none. Mr. Beasley abstains. Now we'll get Mr. Beasley. Thank you, Patrick. And thank you, Keith. You say you're moving this forward. All right, so item number 11, consideration action regarding contract with the BRW Architects for the Central Fire Station Design. Uh, it says Dolph, but who we got? Gabe, is that you? Yeah, Mayor and Council, um, I can't guarantee that Dolph is watching. He's uh, somewhere around Destin, Florida right about now. So 
as all dutiful city employees, I'm sure he's watching, but again, I, I don't know. So Dolph, if you're around, hello. Um, I make this brief. Uh, Gary DeVries from Brown Reynolds Watford Architects is here to answer specific questions. I would draw your attention to the preliminary project schedule, uh, which was in your packet. Uh, pending your approval, we're looking at a project kickoff in, um, by the end of this month. We would like to get a construction manager on board in August. Uh, design will proceed through um, up around the holidays. We hope to be able to bid the project um, early 21. So the contract amount was 1,109,400. Uh, as was mentioned in a previous item, um, this will be funded with bonds that um, will be sold later this summer. The council approved an intent to reimburse. So if there's any, um, again, want to recognize Dolph, who's, who's uh, handled all of this uh, process, uh, interviewing firms, uh, selecting um, the Brown Reynolds Watford to work with, um, Mayor and, and uh, Mayor Pro Tem were involved with that, so uh, we're happy to get this project started. Um, Mr. DeVries, if there's any specifics, uh, would be best to answer those. Why don't you approach and we'll yeah, just, uh, just say hi. We're about to go in business with you. Let's get to know each other. Yeah, hi. <laughs> my name is Gary DeVries. I'm a principal with BRW or Brown Reynolds Watford Architects. Uh, we office in Dallas, but have worked... Uh, all around the DFW area, I guess maybe more recently, just to kind of point out a few of our projects. We did the Central Fire Station for Roanoke Trophy Club, and I guess most recently for uh, Westlake. Uh, so a variety of architectural styles, and I really look forward to working with your community to find the right fit and what kind of represents the character of Saginaw, uh, as well as achieving, of course, all the operational needs of the fire department. What questions y'all have? <clears throat> questions? So does the construct? I'm sorry. Go ahead, Charles. The, please. the construction manager. Where does who brings that person in, or how does that play into this? Yeah, I believe the city is going to release a separate solicitation and request for qualifications, and they will be brought on board in a similar process to the way we were brought on board okay. with short lists and interviews, possibly. And there's a variety of ways the RFQ could be structured. We look forward to partnering with them because, honestly, as we start design, we want them to do construction cost estimating parallel. So we design and they cost and we adjust and they cost again. Mm -hmm. And so in that matter, when we get to the actual final bids, uh, there's no surprises. That's the goal. So you, your, your firm has worked with a construction manager? Yeah, in fact, about nine of the ten cities we've got projects in currently are all CM at risk, the construction manager at risk. We do have two projects that are CSP, or competitive seal proposals. And the discussion earlier about some good construction values now in the marketplace actually is true. We're seeing it both on the CM at risk and the CSP. Uh, no one knows how long those will, you know, last as the economy potentially heats up again. But uh, right now, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say. Well, I won't, I won't speculate. I'll let the construction <laughs> manager at risk do that. But that's why it's so important to get them on board. Sure. Could you maybe speak to how you're going to involve the community? I know we talked about this on the energy process, but not everybody was in that. Could you just explain what your plan is for that? Yeah. Uh, obviously, we like to. Uh, start some early programming with the fire department and the city at large. Uh, typically, we kind of do the operational needs of the fire station, but usually the city has some overall reaching goals. I can see you have great ambitions for developing the community, and uh, this is certainly, you know, a, a, a milestone for your community to create a real, you know, kind of symbol. Uh, and we kind of want to know your feelings on that, so we'll be glad to come back, you know, in the Gabe's direction to show you the early concept designs. But once we have just even the, the kind of the, the kernel, and we're all agreed that we we're starting in the right direction, we'd be glad to involve the community in whatever structure uh, you may organize, whether that's neighborhood groups or an open community forum. Uh, sometimes we find it's a little easier to come with a little bit of a concept that they can react to, uh, and that's always valuable input. 
uh, rather than just coming and kind of ask, well, what do you think it should be? So, but again, we will certainly take your leadership uh, on how that's structured, and we look forward to uh, meeting the community at large. Excellent. Okay, thank you. Uh, Council, other questions? I just have a couple of comments. Sure. Uh, I've known Gary, worked with him at a uh, pretty high-profile Dallas project. Uh, that was the Trinity River Autobahn project. Correct. Uh, back in 2006. Over 10 years ago now. <laughs> it's, it's been a while. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they're an exceptional group of people to work with. They partner well with, with uh, construction management firms. CMAR is a is a definitely a delivery method they're familiar with, but I do want to ask a question of Bren. So Bren, I know that you've put, I, I saw your supplement to the agreement with the architect, but within the agreement with the architect, there are lots and lots of tiebacks to the CM, CMAR's agreement. Uh, and I just want to make sure that when we do engage the CMAR, that those tiebacks that exist in the BRW's agreement are either referenced or they're locked tight together. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, that just there are some handoffs, some just some things in there that could be potentially troublesome if we don't tie them off. Certainly. I just yes. want to make sure that that's we, we make, make sure to do that. That we're aware of that. Uh, the only other comment that I had was we're we're saying in the agreement that we have a construction cost of 11.2 million and it, def it it very well defines what construction cost is and Gary I, I'm assuming that you guys will be using that 11.2 as a constant benchmark even when the construction manager is coming to you and saying you know this is what it might cost in the marketplace I just want us to all understand that that the throttle for this process is that we expect both the construction manager and the architect to hit that budget target. We understand that you know, funding is finite, absolutely. Yes. We work with a lot of communities in the North Texas area. Yeah. We understand how important that is. So we are constantly you know, rebalancing the project scope, the scale of the project you know, with the budget. Yeah. And uh, I mean, we're also looking for good value. I mean, if we can find ways that we think we can accomplish something you know, for less money, you know, again, that's what's so great about this partnership, having a contractor on board early. But, yeah, we are absolutely committed to stay staying within the budget or less than the budget. Anything else? No, sir. Any other questions? Thanks, sir. Great. Appreciate Thank your time. You. Appreciate it. Right, if there are no other questions, staff, anything else to add, Gabe? I'll entertain a motion then. Mr. Mayor, I move that we engage BRW as recommended by staff and approve the contract as presented. I'll second. I'll second. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Excellent. Let's get it going. We're in business now. Good luck. All right, moving forward. Item number 12, consideration action, consideration action regarding board appointments. For that, City Secretary Janice England. Okay, uh, Mayor and Council, once a year we go <coughs> through the boards and the way the terms are set up, we have some that expire alternate years. This year uh, we have positions on the Advisory Recreation and Parks Board, Animal Shelter Advisory Committee, Board of Adjustment, Capital Improvements Advisory Committee, and the Planning and Zoning Commission. Uh, the ones that have terms that are inspiring have been contacted uh, to see if they were willing to uh, stay on the boards and would like to be reappointed. You have notes in the packet that uh, address those people and their response to that. The majority did have enjoyed or have indicated they've enjoyed serving and would like to keep serving. There were some that have moved, had conflicts, and couldn't continue to serve, and those are noted as well. Uh, we also put out notices on the city's website through the email program and other uh, the notification system to let people know that might be interested in serving. We had five, and they are also on a list that have filled out applications that say that they were interested in serving. They ranked where they would want, would want to serve. Some of them wanted to serve wherever they could be of, of help, so that is noted on that paper as well. Tonight we'll need to take action on each board separately. You'll need to take action to accept the resignations of those that have resigned and then do the appointments and reappointments. Uh, one other note is per the charter, the Planning and Zoning Commission members must have resided within the city one year prior to appointment 
must be a registered voter. Also, per the charter, all other appointments on all other boards and committees, members must have resided within the city for six months prior to appointment, must be a registered voter. The only uh, exceptions are on the Animal Shelter Advisory Committee and the Capital Improvements Advisory Committee, and we'll explain those as we go through. We have verified that these five that have shown interest in serving do meet that requirement, so they would be eligible to serve. So uh, if you're ready, we'll start first with the Advisory Recreation and Parks Board. We have uh, place two, Janelle Young. She's willing to be reappointed. Place three, Nathan Weinstock has moved out of the city. city. He has resigned. Place four, Russell Jolly is willing to be reappointed. Place six, Rhonda Nyberg willing to be reappointed. And second alternate, Christopher Gonzalez uh, is no uh, due to time constraints. Uh, another thing I'll add, in the past, what the council has done is when someone resigns that's a uh, full member, normally we'll move up the alternate members into the full member position if you would like to do that tonight. Uh, if your desire is to reappoint these that are willing to be reappointed, that would be place two, Janelle Young, place four, Russell Jolly, place six, Rhonda Nyberg, and then the alternate member on this board is Brandy Cobble. Uh, if you want to do that, as you've done in the past, we could move her into place three to where she'll become a full member. That would leave uh, first alternate and second alternate open positions to be filled. Thank you, Janice. Okay, so uh, <laughs> in, in the past, uh, and, and that was a mouthful, in the past, you know, we have accepted uh, folks that have wanted to be reappointed. We don't uh, typically go in and micromanage these boards, so as long as they're attending and they're still in the city of Saginaw, Thumbs up, they get to stay on. Is everybody okay with that? that yes. Approach? Excellent. So uh, second approach is, second question is, as Janice said, if there's an alternate that is, that is existing, to move them up automatically. Is everybody okay with that? Yes. Yes. Excellent. Let's do that. All right, so now do we want to go in and fill these with the applicants, or do we want to go through, take the entire, go through the entire list first? Um, We've got, essentially, we're in a good business. We've got five people that are applied, and we have five on here. We have five uh, folks that need to be re five slots. Uh, I did understand today there's a sixth slot that we'll have to discuss as well on another yes. committee. Yes. Um, so do we want to go in right now, what would the council like to do, go in and appoint folks to the Advisory and Recreation and Parks Board or listen to everything first to fill slots? What would you all like to do? We've got uh, two slots on Advisory and Recreation Parks Board. And we had Thomas Weaver and Catherine Johnson. Both of them expressed um, interest in the Parks Board as they were one or two choice. You want to put them on there? Yeah. Let's, let's put do them. it. As the alternates, the two yeah. alternates. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, wait we move, one second. We're moving we move up the alternate. What was the recommendation? <clears throat> to place Thomas Weaver and Katherine Johnson into the two alternate spots on the park sport. So, I'm, and this is to the mayor's point, these two individuals also expressed interest in capital improvements and board of adjustments and no one else did. So I just want to be careful about assigning. Well, folks. one of them, I mean, Thomas is his first choice was parks and recreation board. Okay, but did any other person volunteer for capital improvements? Yeah, Trey Harper did. Okay. So but we have do we have one we have two positions to fill on capital improvements. No, and we may be we may be slight of people, we may be short of people anyway. Yeah. And the question is which do we want to fill as we go down? Do we want to fill them all? Because we're still gonna be short of folks, no matter what we do. You know, I guess we wanna do wanna say which committee needs to be. Also we can just fill one alternate. You see what I'm saying? On the parks. Yeah. yeah. I see. Understood. No, I'm Charles. Charles, what do you say? I was saying we can just add one alternate to the parks board and use the other one for another spot. Yeah, that, that, that that's that's fine. They, it is, they are all is an alternate. That's a good point. So yeah, who do you want to be on? Who do you want to put on there, Charles? Let me look. We look. <laughs> okay. Well, Thomas Weaver said number his choice was number one was parks. Was and parks? Yeah. You, want put, you want to put him? Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's right. my recommendation. Everybody else okay with that? All right, so Janice, want to put Thomas Weaver as first alternate on the advisory park and rec board. Okay. 
And so for now, let's leave that second alternate open. Okay. You want to move on to the next one? Let's, or you want to go ahead and vote? Or you want to vote at the end? Let's vote at everything. Can we, is everybody okay with that? Mm -hmm. Janice will make notes and we'll just vote to accept our, our plan. Well, we have to vote individually. For each board? Yes. We do? So okay. we can do that at the end if you want to. Nope. Let's do it as we go. I'll entertain a motion for Advisory, Recreation, and Parks Board. Mr. Mayor, I move that we appoint Thomas, what's Thomas's last name? Weaver. Thomas Weaver as alternate number one for Advisory, Recreation, and Parks Board. I'll second. And Wait, Ann, oh. we're moving up. We're moving up. Um, we, we need to do all of them, all yeah. of the appointments and reappointments. Yeah. All the appointments and reappointments. What's Brandy's last name? Cobble. And to amend my, do I need to, did I get a second? No, but there's no, no you, reason. You can, you can amend. Right. Go forth. I'll amend the motion to add moving Brandy Cobble from the first alternate position to the first available place number three. I'll second. And to reappoint those and other re members. <laughs> yeah. You got it. And, and to reappoint, is this Janelle? Yes. Janelle Young. Russell Jolly. To reappoint all of them. And Rhonda They're Nathan. already on there. Nathan Winstock, mm -hmm. Russell Jolly, and... No, Nathan, not Nathan. Nathan <laughs> moved down. Can, can, can we just say, can we just say as, as discussed? <laughs> Thank you. You know? <laughs> Got it. Yes. Russell's number four. Rhonda's number six. And then he'll put Thomas Weaver's Got it. So scratch scratch my motion. Here comes the motion. Okay. <laughs> I move that we reappoint Janelle Young for place two. That we appoint Brandy Cobble to place three. We reappoint Russell Jolly to place four. We reappoint Rhonda Nyberg to place six. We reappoint Thomas Weaver as first alternate. We appoint, not reappoint. We appoint Thomas Weaver as first alternate. And then we reappoint Christopher Gonzalez as second alternate. Nope. No, no he's, he's gone. gone. No, he's oh, he's gone. gone. Yeah. Leave Christopher off. Okay. Do we have a second? I'll second. I'll second. All those in favor? Excellent. <laughs> Moving on. Okay. Animal shelter. The next one's Animal Shelter Advisory Committee. We have three positions on that. Leo Moore, place two, willing to be reappointed. Jose Whelan, place four, was in the position of the city official, willing to be reappointed. And Norman Adamski, alternate two, willing to be reappointed. I'll entertain a motion. Okay, Mayor, I have a motion that we reappoint place number two on the Animal Shelter with Leo Moore. Place number four with Jose Whelan. Okay. Second? I'll second. Charles so second. All those in favor? Excellent. Moving forward. Okay. The Board of Adjustment is next. Uh, Bobby Grayson, place two, is willing to be reappointed. Cindy Sulcer, place four, does not want to continue to serve. Mike Colgrove, in alternate number two, would like to continue to serve. And this is one of those instances where you could move oh, your wow. alternate, who is James Bergdorf, up to a, a regular spot. And that would leave you one alternate position spot. open. Yeah. All right, so we okay moving up the alternate number one to place four? Yes. Everybody okay with that? Okay. See, we've used just one person right off the bench. So we've got four spots left. Uh, Janice, just for my clarification, where was Mr. Carter? Where was Chris? Capital improvements. Oh, so we haven't got to him yet. Okay. Yeah, he's on the next one. But there, there is an extra spot on capital improvements we will need. To yes, discuss. there will be. So we can leave board adjustments with just one alternate and fill the spots, right? Yes. Instead of having two alternates, they have one and save some other spots for uh, capital improvements committee. Are you all okay uh, with that? Uh, would you like to, uh, Mr. Colgrove is alternate two. Would you want to move him to alternate one? Yep. Okay. So, Janice, why don't you read off what they would be? Okay, that adjustment. would make uh, place two, a reappointment of Bobby Grayson. Place four, we would move alternate 
first alternate James Bergdorf to place four. We would move alternate number two to alternate number one, which would be Mike Krollgrove, and that would leave the vacant position of alternate number two. Do I have a motion to just... Uh But we're on Board of Adjustment. We're not there yet. So do, so do, I, have a, do I have a motion for Mayor, Board of Adjustment? Can I make a motion like Janet said? Perfect. <laughs> Everybody okay with that? It's as recommended yeah, budget. Second. Yeah, a second? <laughs> okay. All those in favor? All right. Now capital improvements. Janet. Okay. On capital improvements, uh, Bob Bates, place two, resigned uh, last October. Sharon Vickers, place four, is no longer working in the area, so she does not want to continue. Uh, we found out earlier today that uh, place three, Chris Carter, actually is deceased. He passed away in April, so we also have an empty space in place three. Uh, we'll point out in place four, it has to be filled with someone involved in real estate. We don't have anybody on the list tonight. That might be something that we need to, we'll have to find someone that will fit that bill. So leave that open, yeah. Yeah, so that would be place four we would want to leave open at this time. Okay. Do we have alternates on that committee that would be moved? We do not. We okay. just have uh, the five places on that committee. Gotcha, okay. All right, so on our list, uh, Trey Harper expressed interest in capital improvements, as did... Um, I guess that was it, right? Yeah, so we want to put Trey on there at uh, place number two. Mm -hmm. And place four, and, the, and Chris's place will still be open. Well, do we want to, uh, Crystal Amador said where needed. Would we want to put her on there? We certainly could. Well, with council, it's council's pleasure. <clears throat> We need to fill one, two, three spots on. Mm -hmm. we, we only fill two tonight because we don't have a real estate person. So we need to fill two, two real places on capital improvements. Can we have two people there? We have, we have Trey, who said he would interest that, and um, Chris Lomador, who said she would go where needed. So we do? You okay with that? Everybody okay with that? So, Janet, will you read off what, we're, what we said? Okay. Uh, the, Trey Harper would be appointed to place two. Crystal Amador would be appointed to place three, and we would leave place four uh, vacant at this time. Do I have a motion for that? Can you turn on your I'll microphone second. so we can get Second. Make a motion. Oh, I make a motion that we do as Janice said. Okay. As, as staff recommended. As staff recommended. Patrick seconded. Second. All in favor, raise your right hand. Yeah. Excellent. Moving on to planning zoning board. Okay, if that leads us to the planning and zoning and the four people that are up, Kenneth Haney, place one, Matthew Lewis, place three, Jason LeBrew, place five, Randy Villarreal, second alternate, all are willing to be reappointed and interested in continuing. All right, do I have a motion for that? Okay. Mayor, I make a motion that we leave the planning and zoning as listed for staff. Okay, do I have a second? Second. Mary, second. All in favor, raise your right hand. Excellent. So I think we covered everybody on our bench. Do we put Steve Smiley anywhere? No, we did not. Steve Smiley. Yeah. No, we or did we? Neither did we put Catherine Johnson. We can. We can just put her on the alternates, parks. I guess. But yeah, alternate on the parks. Could he be one of the alternates oh. for? Where do we have spots? That we, we have an alternate position left on the parks board. We have an alternate position left on the board of adjustment. Shelter's kind of like the park boarding. <laughs> Outdoors, you know. So who are the two? We have uh, Catherine. Catherine and Steve. Okay. Catherine, her second choice was parks board. Yeah, she, her preference is a park board. So, so make Catherine an alternate on the parks board? Yeah. Yes. And then put Steve on the board of adjustments. Right? On the board of adjustments, right? That's where we need a, a spot. Do we need a spot on capital improvements or board of adjustments, Janice? Which one do we need? On the board of adjustment. Okay. okay. All right, I will entertain a motion to say that. Mayor, I make, uh, make a motion for us to approve Catherine Johnson to be the alternate advisory parks and rec board and Steve Smiley to be on the board of adjustments. That's all. That's all. Yeah. Charlie, second that. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Excellent. 
Now, Janice, we just have one spot now to fill with the one with the realtor. The real estate. Right. Yes, be the one that's on the Capital Improvements Advisory Committee that must be filled with someone involved in real estate. Okay. So we'll have to bring that back to you uh, at a later date. If you have someone you'd like to suggest or us to contact, please let us know. Or if you want to contact them, but, uh, let us know. Okay. All right, so you got what you needed, Janice? Yes. You're good? Yes. Excellent. All right, moving forward. So at 739, we are in executive session. Consultation with attorney pursuant to government code, Texas government code 551.071 and Texas government code 551.087. We will return to adjourn. I'm sorry, sir. When will I be able to ask a question? Anytime you want to. I'm sorry, we, I, I would have, didn't know you had a question. Yes, sir, what do you have a question on? Uh, you may have discussed it in prior meetings, but I'm interested in the timeline where they were talking about relocating um, Wayside Middle School and then rezoning that part of Bailey Boswell mm -hmm. to commercial property. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering if you have a timetable when you, that's taking place, you can, one, yeah. one, one, one have you talk to talk to Gabe, talk to Gabe after the meeting because that's not on our agenda, but he can answer your question. Okay. So, because I live on that corner, mm -hmm. and I'd be interested in knowing what timetable you have and how far you're going to. Sure. Talk to you sure. And, he he can talk to you. Yeah. Okay. About how long is this going to take me?
But where's Jan? Where's you got Janice? Is he coming? All right. Uh, at 828, we're back in session. I entertain a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Val Valerie, Charles, all those in favor? Yes. 828, we're adjourned. <laughs>